A lot of leaders, I think, get confused and think their job is to tell what, the what to do. I believe a great leader is someone who can share the why behind the things you need to do and then helps the team and the team can go out and figure out the what and then give them the freedom and latitude to go out and do it. I want to talk a little bit about leadership. Um, What in your mind, Nathan, does it take to be a good leader? What does it take to be a good leader? Wow, we don't have enough time to to cover all of that, right? We don't know. Um, but but there's a few things that I would start off with. I, I think first and foremost, um, as a leader, you have to believe in what it is you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. In in other words, for me, I have to work for an organization that has mission, vision, values, and even product offering that I believe in. Um, if not, I I can't throw my um, passion behind it, right? So I think you have to have that that belief, um, passion behind what you're doing, number one. Number two, from a leadership perspective, once you're bought in and get it, then you've got to be able to ensure that you're communicating effectively with your team so they can understand the why behind everything you're doing. A lot of leaders, I think, get confused and think their job is to tell what, the what to do. Hmm. Um, I think at the end of the day, for me, I, I believe a great leader is someone who can share the why behind the things you need to do and then helps the team and the team can go out and figure out the what. And for me, that's what I think is important in a leader, someone who can cast a vision, help people understand the why, and then give them the freedom and latitude to go out and do it. And, and I would tell you in, in our organization, we have a lot of incredible people that contribute in many different ways. And as a result, it's it's easy to be able to, to share the vision and help them understand what it is we're trying to do and get passionate about it, and then to tap into their abilities and resources, they can can go forth and, and make things happen in a great way. The, the last thing I would say is um, a great leader has to walk the walk. Um, mm-hmm. It's really challenging, I think, for people to get behind and support someone who doesn't seem to do the things they want to tell everybody else to do. And so I think it's always great for uh, a leader to make sure that they're demonstrating the activities and things that they expect others to do. I love that. I love that. Um, what is the best career advice, Nathan, you've ever received? Best career advice? Um, gosh, this this was many, many years ago um, when I was first starting out. Um, I worked, before I came to Mountain America, I worked a number of years in consumer product marketing and um, was excited about progression and upward movement. And um, someone told me early on, that's great that you have these aspirations, but the best way to get there is to be the best at your current job. Mm-hmm. And so I learned right away that it was really important. It didn't matter what job I had that I wanted to focus in on and figure out how I could be the best at my current job, how I could add the most value in my current role. And that usually led to opportunities. And I think sometimes, um, you know, myself included, maybe there's uh, uh, sometimes when we look past what we're currently doing, and if we just realize that if we focus on our current role and become the best at that, other opportunities are made available. I love that. Very, very cool. Um, As a COO of a billion dollar corporation, I mean, well, over 14 billion, right? Um, What keeps you up at night? Wow, up at night. Um, I don't know that it keeps me up at night. I just feel like for us as an organization, I told you our two biggest priorities, right? We want to provide exceptional experiences. We want to make sure our employees are are being developed. Um, I would point back to that. We're, we're in a highly regulated environment. We're always going to have new regulation and things we've got to figure out and deal with. Uh, there are going to be economic cycles where you have ups and downs, inflationary at times and, and others, others when it's not. Those things, they, they come and they go. But I really feel like you can always overcome any of those things, if you never forget who you're serving, and if you always make sure that people are growing and developing. And so my answer would not, I don't know that necessarily be, it keeps me up at night, but those are the two things that I I would tell you I I continue to focus on and prioritize because I really believe that, that they will help us as an organization or any organization overcome any of the outside pressures that, that we all feel and see in whether it's economic related or, or whatever else. Okay. Awesome. I love that. Um, what is your favorite part of being a leader? Wow. Favorite part of being a leader. Um, I love seeing people develop. I love seeing people grow. Uh, and for me, that's that I get a lot of, of 
joy, enjoyment from working with people at, at one point in time and then having the opportunity to experience um, them blossom, if you will, yeah. and, and develop and take on new responsibilities. And um, it's just fun to see that growth. Uh, and I've been fortunate to work with a lot of incredibly talented people that have done just that. They've continue to grow and develop and, and do great things. And, and I, I love being able to see that from, from a leadership perspective. That's awesome. As you're, as you're maybe looking at potential leaders, are there any qualities or characteristics that are, that you're like, oh yeah, they're going to, they're going to kill it? Uh, I, I think some of the things I mentioned earlier, I think someone who really demonstrates true leadership, they walk the walk, they talk the talk. Um, I think that's extremely important. Um, those that uh, are focused on those around them and not necessarily themselves, right? Serv mm -hmm. Servant leader, someone who really is there to take care of and help develop their people and not so concerned about their own movement. Um, I would also say uh, traits of, of just someone who is constantly desirous to learn uh, and develop. As I've looked at people that I, f I respect, there are people that are never, never complacent. They're always wanting to learn and grow and they'll put themselves in uncomfortable positions so they can grow. I love that. Very, very cool. Um, Nathan, if you could talk to former Nathan, knowing where you are now, maybe your younger self, yeah. what would you say to him? Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to put this on repeat. Uh, I would probably say never, never stop learning. Um, continue to be curious and look for ways to, um, to continually be growing. Um, that'd be one thing. Second thing I'd probably say is it's never as bad as you think and it's never as great as you think. Um, <laughs> we have a tendency I love that. we have a tendency to get high and to get low. And I've learned over time that um, there there are always be highs and there will always be lows. And uh, it's it's always best to take take them for what they're worth, enjoy those highs and and realize that uh, they're gonna be temporary. And when the lows come, uh, realize there's always a, a, a way to make it better. I love that. So Nathan, with all of um, the awards that we've won, not only as an organization, but individually and for our teams as well, um, and this might be another repeat answer for okay. you, but what's your secret to success? Um, going back to what we talked about earlier a little bit, I, I would say not forgetting why you're in business. So for us, never forgetting that we're here for the member. Um, awards or whatever, that, that's great. It's a recognition piece for something that went well. And I think n for us not taking our side off who we serve and why we're in business and, and really at the end of the day, the member is what matters at Mountain America. Um, whether you work at a credit union or, or anywhere else, um, making sure that what matters most always matters most is, is what I think will, will help always yield the best results. Okay. So one more question coming off of that too. Um, how do you best balance? Cause I feel like this is always the, the big question, work-life balance yeah. is, does it exist? How yeah. do we have it? Right. What are your thoughts on that? And what advice maybe do you have for, for other people trying to navigate that? This is probably one of those do as I say and not as I do, right? Because I think if you were to talk to people at work, they'd probably say, oh, we need more time. If you were to talk to people at home, they'd probably say, oh, we need more time, right? Um, so I, I think at the end of the day, um, we all have 24 hours in a day. It just depends yeah. on how we divide it up and how we use it. Um, so I think that, again, it goes back to making sure that what matters most matters most. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, well, when I'm at home, I'm at home. When I'm at work, I'm at work. And I think that that's, that's really good if you can really do that. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, you go back to um, a book that, uh, the book Fish, right? I think a lot of people have read the book Fish. Yeah. But um, I, I think you do. You have to find ways to make sure that what you're doing is what you're engaged in and that you're not here physically, but not there mentally. Um, and I, I worked um, with uh, years ago for a, a large uh, corporation, two billion, or let's see, a Fortune 200 uh, company. And the CEO um, had a chance to, to hear him say a couple of things once. One of the things he said was, 
he does his scheduling, his annual scheduling. He was a CEO. He had responsibilities um, with, uh, in his mind, for his family, um, for uh, community, as well as religious responsibilities. And um, this was back east. And he said, you know, first I take my calendar and, and I take what's most important to me and I schedule that out for the year. And for him, it was his family and he put his family things on the calendar. And, and then, you know, he went down to the second most important thing and the third most important thing. And he filled his calendar that way. And I think sometimes um, we get so busy that we try and fit everything in. And as a result, we end up lacking in every area. Yeah. So, so I think the first thing we have to do is what's most important and make sure that we're taking care of those items. And then we can, we can go from there. And I've, I've always felt like that was some good advice. Yeah, that's awesome. So coming off of that advice to close out here, Nathan, maybe for all of those, our viewers watching or yeah. listening in, Obviously, I, I'm assuming a lot of our employees are going to see this too. Um, what is um, some advice, maybe career leadership, just or you know, in general advice as well that you would share with everyone? Uh, I'll share a few things. First, I, I think you need to be passionate about what you do. <clears throat> if you're if you don't care, and if it's just a, a job that you're punching the clock for, go find another job. Right? Doesn't matter what industry you're in or what job you're doing. You need to care about what you're doing and be passionate about it, um, because that's going to make all the difference in the world. Second, as I mentioned before, I think all of us need to to always strive to be a learner. Find ways to learn. You can learn in any situation. You can gain value from it and then take it away and apply it. Uh, and I think that's always going to be helpful. Um, so so learning. And then, and then lastly, this is something that I feel, unfortunately, we've talked about leadership. I don't know that all leaders do very well. Um, but as an employee, I think it's really important to go and sit down with your, your boss and have a development conversation and just help them understand what you're trying to accomplish and work with them to put a plan in place so you can do it. Um, development is personal, it's individual. Yeah. Oftentimes we're waiting for somebody to develop us. And I think it's really good advice that I've heard uh, before. You need to own your development, take it by the horns and make sure that you go out and find ways with your boss and others to continue to grow and develop and learn. Um, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's gonna be able to control your future, not those around you. Love that. Love that. Well, you guys heard it from Nathan Anderson himself. <laughs> thank you so much, Nathan, for thank joining you. us. Appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And thanks to all of you for joining us as well. Your development is in your own hands. So go develop and we'll see you on the next episode of Guiding You Forward. Mm -hmm.